them. You feel safe around them, all right? So the safeness in Christ, is, it should be 10 times way better than that. Everybody say 10 times way better than that. The safeness of Christ requires you to walk in no worry. I'm going to say that again. The safetyness of Christ requires you to walk in no worry. We understand worry is a what? Is a spirit. So let me, let me break that even down. He says, though a host, fear is a host. Fear is a host. So if you, anybody watched the movie Spider-Man? Praise God. All right. The, uh, Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2, when that big old, what you call it, antennas got a hold of the, the, the guy, and he became the host to that. All right, okay. She only went, praise God. We're going to watch Spider-Man. Okay, all right. So he became a host. He became a host of a spirit. Though a host comes against me, a host, a spirit, spirit called worry, a spirit called confusion, a spirit called complacency, a spirit called um, I know it all. And because sometimes when we don't feel safe, we do the most. I'm not talking to anybody. So we don't feel safe about something, okay? We do the most, all right? So if somebody, uh, if you walked in your house right now and, you know, you got there safe and you heard a noise knock on your window, all of a sudden your mindset, your, your, your mindset of safety this changes. Right? You go grab something if you like me. Or <laughs> I, mean, I, I ain't talking about a Okay, never mind. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. Get your concealed license. All right, here we go. So your, your mindset changes. So here's the thing. God won't move if you don't feel safe about it. Y'all catch me because I've been fasting and praying and God been showing me some stuff. He won't move if you don't feel safe about it because you have a free will. A host, a ho if you feel unsafe, another member in your, in your members rises called fear, called your flesh. And when we're afraid about something, we react to it according to what we're afraid about, our flesh. They started referring to our spirit man, whatever you feed the most. I've been, I've been preaching that for years. Whatever you feed the most is what is activated in the time of pressure, in a time of fear, if I feel unsafe, um, for those that are single, if you feel unsafe about somebody, you know, you, you know, hey man, if you feel unsafe about that joker or joquette, you ain't going to tell them where you live. You meet, meet me there. Right? Okay. Hey Amen. Everybody married here? Okay. All right. <laughs> so it's a, it's, safeness is a form of thinking. It's a certain mindset that you must have in Christ. If you don't feel safe about what God is doing in your life, he ain't going to move like he want to. So too many, la too many layers are in the way of God moving. I'm going to say it again because somebody need to write it down. That's too many layers in the way of God moving. What is a layer? Fear. What is the opposite of faith? Fear. What is the opposite of God moving? You moving. <laughs> what is moving? That host. Fear. Because I don't feel safe. I don't feel comfortable. Here we go. One thing I would desire, get in your mindset, write this down, that I, I want the presence of God with me always. Get that in your mind. I'm teaching like I ain't preaching. I want the presence of God with me always. I want the presence of God with me so strong that as I pass people, my shadow heals them, Peter. Right? I want, as, as this, I've, been, I've been with God so much that I come off the mountaintop and the people see a glow on my, <laughs> a glow on my face. It looks, it looks, to the world, it looks unsafe. Write this down. To the world, God looks unsafe. To a worldly mindset person, to, to a world person, God looks unsafe. It's not sure. It's not guaranteed. Oh, I can't see him. Oh, I can't hear him. Oh, I don't fit. Right? So a, 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 a ramp of safeness in Christ that it requires relationship. Everybody say relationship. Everybody say relationship. 
You will feel safe if you have a relationship. I just, I just gave you, if you feel safe with your family, you have a relationship with them. Right? You feel safe with your husband, you feel safe with your, your cousin, your mom, whoever. You have a relationship with them. Right? Translate that to God. You get a relationship with God. You get a relationship with God. You spend time with him always. You don't mind being in his, in his presence when it's inconvenient for you. God says, I want you going to fast, and you and McDonald's drive through line. <laughs> so here's the thing. I got to correlate to, 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 your, to your flesh. You feel unsafe if you don't eat. Uh, you, you go to a certain mindset. Man, I don't eat at this time. I'm going to get a headache. My stomach going to start talking to me. Man, I'm going to start acting hangry. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Because in that, in that, in that ram, in that, if I don't eat, boy, I'm, I'm about to tell you. But there is a safeness in Christ, guys, that will surpass your, all, all your understanding. I don't understand what's going on in my life. I don't understand, can I be honest? We don't understand what's going on in our life all the time. Some of y'all right now don't understand what's going on in your life. But the saintliness in Christ, he will reassure you of what he's doing, that he's doing something great. He's doing something beyond your capacity. He's doing something above your imagination. And you got to, and write this down, you got to feel safe about it. He says, Pastor, how you feel safe about it? The Bible says, when you fast. The Bible says, when you fast, fasting, get out of the church and mindset that fasting is just for a jerk. Fasting is for a revelation. Some revelation for us is God is, as I say, he, he, is, he is our bodyguard. He is that void that I need to be filled and not filling it with something else. Because I don't feel safe. We gravitate to our flesh what makes us feel safe, but that, that doesn't make us feel holy or maintain our holiness in Christ. We gravitate to what makes us feel good in flesh, but it's not holy. Right? Because our flesh desires what our flesh desires. Because of a mindset of safetyness. Everybody say safetyness. All right, here we go. I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Now, um, I got to teach you, the house of the Lord is, uh, is not this building. The Bible says we are the temple of the what? The living God. The Holy Spirit lives in us. The Holy Spirit may be in this room because we are in this room. Ah, somebody catch it? The Holy Spirit is in this room because we are in this room. Right? He lives in us. Now, write this down. This is going to challenge some people in the room and that's watching me. Is he activated in you, though? Because when we, we, you know, we walk, you know, I remember my, my, when I got saved, I was in the balcony. I was scared out of my mind. I remember the, the road Bishop was in. And I got the Bishop, he said, what you want? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and all about, in my mind, I feel unsafe. This is unfamiliar territory to me. I'm preaching to some people in the room. God's going to take you in unfamiliar uh, territory, but you got to feel safe in God to walk in it. Because whatever you don't feel safe in, you won't walk in. Whatever you don't feel safe in, you won't walk in. So God is trying to give you some property. God is trying to give you things that in your mind you're like, what? Everybody say, what? You feel unsafe. You feel unsure. Singles, what if the, what if the Lord show you a glimpse of your, your husband if you're a woman? He'll show you a glimpse of your wife. And you like, hmm. What? Mm. Lord, can you just can you just fix him up like this? You know, he uh, like, he too dark. You know, can you just lighten him up? You know, I'm trying to make y'all laugh. Y'all hard to laugh. All right, they're laughing on the video. Thank you. But if God shows you a glimpse of your future and it's not what you want, all right, let's read the house of the Lord. Everybody said the house of the Lord. The days of my life. So, so I don't have to be in the church always for God to be activating me, for God to dwell in me, for God to take place, do some things in my life. I don't have to be in the building always. This is, for Christianity, a safe place. 
but the presence of God should be our, our safe place. We make the building our safe place. But we didn't make spending time, the presence of God, our safe place, our dwelling place. Write this down. Somebody need this tonight. All hell breaking loose, but I'm in my safe place. They getting on my nerves. They getting on my nerves. I'm getting on my nerves. But in me dwells my safe place, my safe person, my comfort. The Bible speaks about in John chapter 14. He is our comfort. He will bring everything back to our remembrance. Some things God has blessed you what you forgot about. And God has to bring it back to your attention to make you feel safe. Some of the calamities that you have faced in your life, God had to bring back to your attention. He says, you remember, you remember back in 19, whatever you was born. I ain't going to call no, praise the Lord. <laughs> Who the oldest person? I'm playing that man. <laughs> the most seasoned, I'm sorry. So God has to bring things back to your remembrance to make you feel safe. Now, here's the thing. What makes you feel unsafe? Unfamiliar territory. Un- unfamiliar territory. Because your flesh is too nosy to try to understand. I'm going to say that again. Unfamiliar territory, your flesh rises to understand. But what God has for you, is for you, is not always for you to understand. Just walk. Here's Peter on the boat. And Jesus, with himself, walking on the water. And then Peter said, bid me, that Jesus, you, bid me to walk on the water to you. Okay, cool. Everybody say cool. Everybody didn't say cool. Everybody say cool. Now, for that split second, Peter felt safe in God. Man, I'm giving y'all Bible tonight. Peter stepped out of the boat and felt safe in God. He wasn't concerned about nobody, nobody looking at him. He was not concerned about his surroundings. He stepped out the boat in his safe place. And then when he stepped out of himself, his safe place, he began to sing. And some of y'all right now that's watching, you, you step out of God. You stepped into you, and now you're sinking. Oh, I finna say something to mess people up. You manifested stuff. Because you feel safe about it. You manifesting stuff. Oh, this something will happen. Uh, and then incorporate God in nowhere in that. Here's the thing. You can manifest it, but you're not going to maintain it. Somebody need to write that down. You can manifest it, but will you maintain it? What God has for you, he, maintains, he, keeps, you, he keeps you on track to maintain what he's doing in your life. All the money he's going to give you in the bank. And get this, blessings of God is not always money. Hey, can I be very honest with church people tonight? Some of us don't need no money. I'm going to say it again because, you know, some people looked at me crazy. And they're like, some of us don't need money. You know why I say that? Because some of us don't know how to use it. Don't know how to use it. Don't, don't know how to put it where God said put it. So, therefore, you don't need no money. Because you don't, you don't feel safe. You don't feel safe. Are you listening to me? You don't feel safe in the abundance that God gave you. Some of y'all don't need property because you ain't taking care of the property you got now. <laughs> I walk over your property and your grass is sky high. I'm like, where your house? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to be an entrepreneur. Cool, 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 cool. Everybody say entrepreneur. Oh, cool. All right. All right, you got a business? All right. Cool. All right, you taking care of business? Oh, I forgot. Oh, right, 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 right. You know what? I'm going to tell them myself. When I was in college, when I was in college, um, I had that prideful mindset that I remember everything. Um, you know, I had classes, I had stuff to do, I had uh, paper assignments, stuff to do, and I was relying on my mind only. I ain't writing nothing down. And uh, 
I had a friend come to me, uh, and she said, uh, where your calendar? I was like, huh? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I, man, I can remember. And 90% of the time I did, but that other percent I was, oh, dang, yeah, I got to go to that class. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to get you to understand, counting up the cost of the realm of your safety -ness. Safetyness is to, to this to some people. Um, have more than enough in the bank account, more than enough land, travel. And if that's not you, don't take offense. Let me travel. Oh, I'm going to go here. Woo! Eat this food. Woo! All right. Boom. All right. Pay for that. Uh, price don't matter. All right. Good. That's some of our safe. Our safe. But how about being in safe in God when you don't have material things to rely on? Money. Money ain't everything. You can have money and still not feel safe. Going crazy in your mind. You can have the perfect husband, uh, women of God in here, but not, still not feel safe in your mind. Have the perfect wife. But still not feel safe in your mind. Safeness is a mindset. Safeness is a mindset. Now let's talk about something. Everybody say torment. Everybody say torment again. So the enemy's job is to torment you about your past. I'm going to say that again for everybody in the room and everybody watching. The only thing the enemy can use it's your past. Because get this, he don't know anything about your future. Man, I just said something. Only thing he can rely on is on your past. So how many of y'all feel when, you, when, a, when a memory comes back to you that you, you trying to erase and it comes back to you, you feel some type of way. You're like, man, boy, if I did it this way, if I told her this, if I slapped her, you know. If I slapped him, if I just, uh, he had no fronts, he had no eyes, and then, <laughs> hey, some of us like revenge because we want to feel safe again. We want to feel safe again. We want revenge because we want to feel safe. We want to feel secure again. Hey, revenge is not yours. It's the Lord's. Let me get back to the scripture because some of y'all looking at me like, all right, come on, come on. Everybody say, come on. Somebody giggling, that's what I'm talking about. Verse 5, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in our bavarian. Now, in the time of trouble, how many of y'all facing trouble right now? In the time he shall hide you. Um, I always ask God, why, God, you didn't let me see stuff? He says, I was protecting you at the time. Now that you become a grown man, now I'm opening your eyes to see it from my perspective. Because if I saw it from the world's perspective, I'd be messed up. He should hide you. He should hide you from certain, certain things. Oh, um, I always, uh, you know, my, if, I, if I asked my mom back in the day when I was, was younger and my dad, I said, can we go here? Can we go to their house? And they said, no. There was, God, actually, God was using them to protect me. He shall hide you. He shall hide you from things that you really want to expose yourself to, but you're not ready for it. Everybody, get this, everybody is, is not ready for money. I said that already. Some people ain't ready for entrepreneurship because that's a part, of, that's a part that you're not ready for. That's something that you're not responsible enough yet to take care of. So he hides you. Why is he hiding you? Because he's trying to tell you something. I'm color purple. Okay, all right. <laughs> Let me get back. <laughs> I said, <"Come." laughs> Quiet, we're going to sing that. All right. He's trying to hide you. He's trying to hide you from that joker you really want to be with. He's trying to hide you from that, that girl you really want to be with. He's he, he taking, he taking you through a David moment. David, wake up on his rooftop, and you see, woo! Everybody say, woo! And some of y'all are still in the woo process. Woo! 
And you know what? David should be at war. He should have been fighting. Right? But he was still in the whoop. Whoop. Hey, bro, bro. You know, I'm peppering. Bro, go get her. That's what I want. And I want it now. I'm sweating. I'm working hard tonight. He should hide in a time of trouble. Now, his trouble is, is, is a mindset. Trouble is, is invented to change your mindset. Somebody need to write that down. Trouble was invented to change your mindset. I'm going to say that again because somebody need to hear it on my left side. Trouble was invented to change your mindset. If the enemy can change you, uh, change your mindset, change you who you think you are in Christ, now you start walking different. Only reason people do what they do because they think they got to do it. That's a part of their mindset. They think they have to steal. They think they have to cheat. That's a part of their mindset. It's become, they become a host to a mindset. Spirits carry personality, and they carry, personalities carry what? Mindsets. Right? So in a time of trouble, he shall hide you. Let's keep going. He shall hide you uh, in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle, shall he be hid, hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Something steady. Something stable. That rock should be who? Jesus. Something that's not going to be removed. A lot of things are being removed in the world. A lot of shift is going on. But Jesus shall remain. Even if we take tangibility, take tangible things away, Jesus shall remain. They took prayer out of school. Jesus shall remain. They, <laughs> they're putting nasty stuff in movies, but Jesus shall, they put horror, terror stuff in movies, and we go and see them, woo, woo, and we're still in the war, the woo process, but we're getting deceived. But Jesus shall remain. He is our rock. If we stand on Christ, he shall not, rem- he shall not be removed. If we stand on Christ and hold up the standard of Christ, because it does no good for us to stand on Christ and not hold him up. Stand on Christ, but not hold him up. Have a form of godliness, but with denying the power of. If somebody come to me and say, oh, Pastor, I need prayer, I pray immediately. I'm standing on the rock. I'm standing on the, the rock of Jesus Christ, the foundation. I'm not going to waver in my ways. I'm not going to waver in my dedication. I'm not going to waver in my, my dedication to God and communion with him. Because if I don't commune with him, I go crazy. How many of y'all go crazy if you don't talk to God on the day, on the daily, uh, on the daily? Right? You, you go crazy if you don't read your word. All of a sudden, man, why am I acting like this? You ain't putting nothing in you. Man, I'm acting ratchet. I ain't, gonna, no, ain't nobody raise their hand. Just put your, put your hand like this. Nobody did. Okay. If I say they, somebody gonna get a million dollars, they would have did. Huh, Isaac? Isaac McIsaac. All right. What the fuck? All right. Being safe in Christ. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I, I hope y'all learning something tonight because God is good to me. Woo! In the tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my what? My enemies. Round about me, therefore, will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of what? Joy. And I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hey, it's, this is a word for somebody in the room. Some of y'all are worried about your enemies too much. You got their agenda. You got their agenda. And you ain't got God's agenda. Hey, we talking about Satanists in Christ tonight. If you're Satan in Christ, I ain't worrying about them. All right. Let me do what I'm doing. In Christ. In Christ. Because a lot of us are doing stuff, but we may not be doing it in Christ. Right? That's the difference. That's the difference. If we're doing stuff and then expecting God to bless it, that's the wrong order. 
Okay, let me, let me slow down. Because I almost said it. I feel my heart going. They didn't laugh over there. All right. Here's the correct order. I seek God. God, is this you? Okay. God bless it. Help me to walk through it. Not, not, not. Oh, this is my agenda, Lord. This is what I want. This is what's going to happen. Bless it. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? Arrogant Christians are doing it all around the world. Oh, God bless this. This is going to happen in my life. I'm going to manifest this. You get the millions, you get the house, and it crumbles because it, was on, it wasn't on the rock. It wasn't on the rock. Who is the rock? Jesus is the rock. It, if it's not on the rock, it's not going to stand. Storms happen in your life. Calamity hits your mind. The Bible says, so a man thinketh. Why did it say, so why did it say, so a man thinketh? Because how we think is according to what's around us. Your flesh. If something's feeling good, boy, you like, whoo, <laughs> something feeling bad. Somebody talking to you crazy. Your mind, all of a sudden, is just like, I'm going to say this. Boy, <laughs> you better get off me. <laughs> and you, you put the, you know, you put the, if I wasn't a Christian, you know, praise God. How many of y'all say that? Oh, all right. Everybody, safety is in Christ. Hey, write this down if you're taking notes. I shall remain safe in Christ. Write that down. Put that on the table, y'all. I shall feel, feel, feel safe in Christ all the days of my life. There is no second guessing in Christ because I feel safe. What he said about me, what he has spoken of my life before the foundation of the earth, before I was formed in my mama's womb, it was safe. Before I knew about an enemy, the devil, I was, I was safe. Before I was introduced to whatever, whatever weakness that you, you, you do, you are safe in Christ. But that does not give you an excuse just to practice it. Oh, I'm saved in Christ. I'm saved. I, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm going to heaven. If you got saved just to go to heaven, you're not relying on the saveness of Christ. If you don't believe you can be healed supernaturally by the power of God, it's time to rely on the saveness in Christ. Before a man of God or a woman of God lays hands on me, that secret place, remember, because I got to activate it every day. How many of y'all deal with people? Everybody should raise their hand. Everybody deal with people? All right. Praise the Lord. So you deal with personalities. You deal with spirits on people, and you got to have that still away moment while you still talking, while you still working. All right, Lord. <laughs> Woo, and all of a sudden, I don't know about y'all, I just feel something rise up in me. Boy, I'm like, oh, there it is. <laughs> Boy, I get that second win. How many, okay, I'm an excited one now. All right. I get that second win. That's real true. Because sometimes I don't feel like being holy. <laughs> Am I the only one? Sometimes I don't feel like praying all the time. But all of a sudden, sometimes, sometimes, Here's the thing. We're responsible for activating the secret place in, in us. I'm going to say it again. We are responsible for activating the secret place in us. But here's the thing. God is so good. The more you activate the secret place, sometimes the secret place activates on its own and just hey, wake you up. Y'all like that? Let me do that again. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. All right. Sometimes it's activated it's on its own. All of a sudden, I feel virtue just, woo! Mm. I always say this. I think I said this to the leader in the leadership meeting. Your anointing is not just for you. But aren't you glad that your anointing has no respect to person? Sometimes your anointing hit you. You're, oh, God, just touch me right now because I don't feel safe, so I, I feel, I'm, I'm, I'm finna just... I'm putting my foot... Right? Activate that secret place on your own. Hey, Pastor, how you do that? 
hey, man, a simple, a simple comp- uh, a conversation. God, you, understand, you, you see what's going on, right? Hey, 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 let's stop being religious. And you in your workplace. Hey, 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 Lord. How, how many of y'all got cold words? You know, if you got children, you know, praise God. You give them a cold word, something going crazy. You, know, you give them a cold word, they say it, right? And then you know, you know what's going on. All right? Uh, I ain't going to tell that story because I don't want to embarrass nobody. You got a cold word. You should have a cold word in God. You know what your cold word is? Somebody say it. I'm going to mute the mic and preach. Whoever said it. It's coming. Hallelujah. Your cold word is Jesus. Your safe place is Jesus. He has no respect of person. What he's done for others, he can do for you. Hey, God is, God is a God of miracles still. Did you hear what I just said? Grab that. Pull on me tonight. God is still a God of miracles. Hey, and get this. And get this. If you have constant communication with Christ, you don't have to spend all day. Try, uh, woo, God, I just, I, I just want to. My sister tell you, my sister tell you when I'm when I'm when I'm flowing and stuff, y'all see it. I, I walk and all the time I'm pacing and all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm getting older, so you know, just I ain't old, but you know, I don't want to walk all the time. All right, so I just want sometimes I just want to. How many of y'all got that calm before the storm anointing? Somebody getting on your nerves, you just like. Us, oh, never mind. Some of y'all just like, I'm going to tell you. Come here. You know, just, all right. All right. That was funny. Nobody laughed. Here we go. Here we go. Let's, let's, let's go on. Y'all learning something? Are y'all learning something? All right. Isaiah 26. I said a few minutes ago, safetyness is a mindset. I said a few minutes ago, safety is a mindset. Everybody say that. Safetyness. Is a mindset. The Bible says, let this mind be you, you was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus had a safe, he was uh, securing him himself. He knew who he was. Amen. There was no second guessing. He was safe in Christ. Isaiah, I said Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, very familiar. Thou will keep him in what? In perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Now, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit this real quick, and I'm, I'm going to get off of it. Everybody say career. career. Um, every person in the sound of my voice, you do something, you work, you get up, you get, you're, you're nine to five. I don't care if you're an entrepreneur, you're doing something. All right? So I want to speak very, very closely to people, to your career. Uh, you do not have to sell out to be promoted. I'm going to say it again. I'm hitting this and I'm getting off of it. You don't have to sell out to be promoted. David did not sell out. David was was watching sheep. David was watching sheep. And his elevation came to his house. While he watching sheep. And his brothers chilling. Everybody say chilling. Chilling. Some of y'all chilling you need to stop chilling. That's a word. That's a word for somebody. Some of y'all chilling. You relaxing too much. You need to move. Faith without works is dead. All right? So pertains to your, 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 your career in God, some of y'all working jobs that you don't really want to go to, hey, change your attitude. Bro, t- sister, I almost went here. I'm sorry. Change your attitude. Hey, get out of this mindset or this spirit called nine to five. You dread getting up. And you get up at the last minute. <laughs> and you got a demonic force called snooze. And you got 15 alarm clocks. And you know on iPhone, you got. Hey, 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 be on time. Be on time for your promotion. Oh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to deal with her. That's a part of your promotion. Yeah. 
So here's the thing. Um, I, 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 I used to have a job that I loved and I hated at the same time. Because it was dealing with music. I loved music. But I hate it. Amen. I ain't going to say nothing else. Lord, she getting on my nerves. I almost did a Elijah prayer, and the Lord said, no, hold your peace. That's a part of your promotion. If you can't deal with people, you can't deal with my promise I'm going to give you. Oh. He told me that. I'm like, all right, all right, cool, cool, cool. Everybody say prayer time. Prayer time, prayer time revealed to you. God revealed to you what you don't want to hear. And some of us are so smart that we ignore it. Then it comes back and bites you in the butt. So I want to encourage you, hey, stop dreading your nine to five. You are there for a reason. You are there, get this, write this down, put this on your heart. You are there to walk in your anointing. Hey, get out of church. Anointing is not always laying hands. Anointing can be love and kindness. I told you, I love my child. I love the kids. They, I love the kids so much, I, I, I say, you, they knew who I was talking to, and they, I couldn't remember their name. <laughs> Mr. Carr, they called me back. Oh, right. <laughs> I was say, you, and it was like, can I do it? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I had to get to the point that I start enjoying my job. I had to command it. When I get there, I'm like, they better have this ready. What if they don't? If they don't have it ready, are you ready? Because get this, this is a part of growth. Man, I think I said past, I, I told, I told it, it'll come back to me. Development, thank you, Holy Spirit. Development, growth, repeat. Somebody need to write it down. Development. Growth, repeat. Without development, growth won't happen. I'm getting you a million dollars right there. Without development, how's the development happen, Pastor? Uncomfortable situations in your life that arise. We still talk about safetyness, but in your safetyness, you've got to develop. There's a lot of things I'm at peace about because God has developed me in the area. Man, there's some things I'm not at peace about because God had, hadn't developed me yet in that area. God, ooh, God, ooh, ooh. Hey, Christians don't walk in that spirit. Oh, I got to go to this job. No, I'm going to this, this, this stepping stone. Man, catch me tonight. I'm going to this stepping stone until I own my own business. Until I make my own money and I got people working for me making me money. Man, I, I receive that. Multiple streams, I keep saying it. I keep saying it. 2020 is a year I speaking over your life. It's multiple streams of income. Amen. Along with multiple streams of income, multiple streams of development. Hear me. Multiple streams of development. God ain't just going to hand you money and you don't know how to use it. You got to develop it. Hey, that's a word for somebody. Stop being so stubborn. You don't know it all. That's a word for somebody in this house. You don't know it all. Stop being so stubborn. I don't know. I don't know it all. I'm anointed. I was anointed since birth. The, Lord, the, the devil tried to take me out in birth because he already knew 2020, 32 years old, preaching the gospel and living it. Amen. Man, I'm going to chew this mic. I'm going to chew this mic. And I'm still, I pay for it, praise the Lord. I'm still developing. I'm still listening to the voice of God. God, well, you want me to do that? Okay, cool. I don't know how, but I'll figure it out. If you hear my voice, if you hear my words, how I use it, and, you know, Bishop, uh, Pastor K, they may ask me something. I don't know how to do it, but I'll figure it out. Because I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm still hungry. 
I'm still hungry for God. I'm still hungry for the test of God. I'm still hungry for what he's going to give me. And I'm thankful for what he's already gave me, given me. Safetyness. I'm safe in Christ. Nothing shall, shall put, put me in a mood like, oh, one more time. God bless me one more time to go to the job. You said one more time? Did, did you just catch what I just said? You, one, one more time? God bless me to keep going all the time, all the days of my life. I'm going to walk in here with so much joy, they're going to think I'm cuckoo. But I don't care, but I got joy. Hey, hey, and I'm going to say this and I'm quitting. Sometimes you got to fake it until God hits you with it. I'm going to say it again and I'm, I'm, I'm closing. Sometimes you got to fake it until God slap you with it. Sometimes you got to fake being nice to people until God slap you with it. And all of a sudden you're like, I don't know why I'm being nice to you, but I'm doing it, I'm doing it out of obedience instead of faking. That is the difference. You can do it out of obedience, or just faking. Oh. The pastor told me to hug you. All right. The pastor told me to pray for you. All right. The pastor said, I got to preach tonight. Somebody said, be always ready. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ.